merged with Osiris' body, through this union, the sun received the power of new life while Osiris was reborn in the sun. So in the morning when the sun comes up in the east, this is literally the birth of the sun god, which is why the pagans worship towards the east and they worship in when in the solstice, the, etc., the um, morning and the evening and the high time during the seasons, between the seasons, etc., etc., the summer solstice and the winter solstice, the birth and the death of the sun god. This comes from ancient pantheistic, paganistic beliefs. And they believe that in the middle of the night the sun um, got its life and it was reborn in the morning and that's what is worshipped. So if you go back, literally back to the physical Egypt and you have a look at the, the uh, archaeological finds, you will see here the people of Egypt venerating with their arms in the air the sun god. Right There's the sun with his sun rays coming down. But please note that the sun is depicted here and usually with the snake, just like the Pharaoh was depicted with the snake in his forehead. So the sun is depicted with the snake. And these people were venerating, literally worshipping the sun god. And if you understand that the snake, the dragon, the serpent that beguiled Eve, the devil, Satan himself, turned worship around to face the east, and you understand that Satan's, sun, uh, Satan's worship is sun worship, you understand why there's a snake in the sun in Egypt. Because this was literally the worship of the snake, the worship of the sun god. And please also notice that the Pharaoh was uh, with his... With his um, his hat and his whole headgear had the snake in his forehead. The reason for that is because just like the sun, the Pharaoh was known as the, the emperor or the king, the sun king on earth. He was the, the high priest of the his sun basically. He was the sun god in living form. Now listen what is written in the Antiquities of Egypt on page 14. Now when the ancient Egyptians, awestruck and wondering, turned their eyes to the heavens. They concluded that two gods, the sun and the moon, were primeval and eternal. They called the former Osiris and the latter Isis. Two gods, Osiris and Isis, the sun and the moon. These two became the cornerstone worship system of paganism. And you can't really blame them because think about it, without the sun everything dies. So the, the people realized that through the power of the sun, the, the plants were living and, uh, and we existed and uh, diseases were cured, etc. So people automatically, that's how clever Satan is. He, through the power of the creation, he manipulates God's people to get involved in false systems of worship. Now, I want you to also look at something else that I need to bring in here. And that is the pagan trinity consisted of the worship of the sun, the moon, and the stars, there you can see them, the sun, either in the form of a star or a circle with the star inside it, the moon in the form of a crescent, and the star itself, the sun, the moon, and the stars, the father, mother, child, the uh, Osiris, Isis, and Horus, right, the three gods. This is the foundation for the pagan trinity. You see, everything that belongs to God Satan steals for himself. And we read in the Bible about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So he manipulates this one God in three forms into three gods in three forms. He turns it upside down and he makes these three gods, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And now no longer is it God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's now God the Father, God the Mother, and God the Child. And that's where paganism comes in. You might have noticed that there are some religions that worship mother and child relationships, right? But we'll get into that in the second half of this presentation. So this is the background of paganism, the trinity based on sun worship. Here is an, a relief from the Assyrian style or an Assyrian style relief from King Barak. This is from the 8th century before Christ. This guy over here is the combination of the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon, there you have um, I, uh, Osiris and Isis, Osiris and Isis, right? And please note, this is called, and I want you to say this word, it's called the Baal Hadad. It, it sounds a little bit cleaner to me if you say Baal Hadad. 
and very, depending which language you're speaking. But let's call it a Baal Hadad for argument's sake. Here's a nice clear close-up version so you can see the sun inside the crescent moon. And these uh, people here are venerating this Baal Hadad. The sun god has always been worshipped in the form of the Baal Hadad. And if you go back to ancient Egypt, here's Tutankhamun's pectoral. And he, uh, you got the desert scarab with his wings outstretched. This is one of the gods they worshipped. But what do you notice on top? Can you see there the circle with the crescent moon? The Baal Hadad. There's another one. Either with the star with the crescent moon or a circle with the crescent moon. This is the eye of Osiris, right, from Egypt. The circle, we know that the sun is a star. So it's either depicted as a star or a circle inside the crescent moon. But these two are always father and mother, the relationship between the two. Let's bring it to modern day context. I want to take you to Lithuania. Here in Zventoj, uh, in Lithuania, is a pagan worship site. You can see the, th the three phalluses. The, this is a symbol for sex worship, right? But on here, can you see the snake? The snake on here. And can you see this is the crowning of the snake? This is the crowning of the sun god in the form of a big phallus. I beg your pardon if I have to explain this to those that don't understand what a phallus is. This is the male sex organ standing up vertically. This is the king, the, s the sun king or the, the snake king. And being worshipped with the sun and the crescent moon. And if you were to be on top of this point, you would see directly, you'd see the sun and the crescent moon from that point. From our perspective, it looks exactly like this, the Osiris and Isis. Can you see how these symbols have come throughout the ages from the ancient Egyptian times right through to today? And <clears throat> paganism is the basis of the worship of Lucifer. Please note here and have a look at this. All pagan gods are channels through which Satan receives worship. All pagan gods are channels. It doesn't matter if you are worshipping a stick or a tree or a sun or a moon or your dog or yourself or your car or your cell phone or your whatever. All forms of paganism are all forms of different gods, statues and... Um, Buddhas and uh, different things. Those are all different channels like the Hindu various goddesses etc. and gods of the Hindu pantheon. Those are different forms of worship of Lucifer. And they all are uh, about to come to a clash. Because have a look at this. The chief pagan deity has always been the sun. And the earth over here is filled between both paganism and Christianity. This was... What we saw at Mount Sinai, I beg your pardon, Mount Carmel with Elijah. We noticed there that Elijah said, today you're going to have to choose. Why are you faltering between two opinions? Either God is God or Baal and, uh, Baal and Asherah are God. Choose. Today the earth is, is the, the battleground between paganism and Jesus Christ. Nothing much has changed. Now, in the second half of this presentation, we're going to put all of this background into context. And I'm going to show you photographs and give you background and more information about how this fits into modern day worship. I'm going to show you some ancient pendants and we're going to look at some of the religious leaders around the world. And we're going to see how paganism is today forming part of the Christian church. It's going to get very exciting. Please join me for the second half of this presentation. Thank you.